I'll now touch base upon muscle invasive bladder cancer. So this is stage two or stage three disease. And this is where things change. We acknowledge that the standard of care for muscle invasive bladder cancer is no longer bladder preservation as it relates to putting medicine inside the bladder. This is where we start talking about giving systemic chemotherapy followed by bladder removal or something called trimodal chemoradiation or TMT, bladder preservation. Prior to any bladder preservation uh, approach, which is uh, chemoradiation, the patient should undergo a maximal TURBT so we can eradicate as much as possible uh, any cancer. We know that response rates are much higher if we're able to do that. And this is identical to what we do when we do a restaging exam prior to intravesical treatment. So all the same rules apply. The Mass General was is sort of the, the, the group that um, uh, Bill Shipley and uh, Jason are really the, the, the people that have uh, shown the most effectiveness of this. Clearly, you have to be able to select patients for bladder preservation, and I'm happy to go over that more in detail. But clearly, there's evidence to support bladder preservation in select patients that actually are able to tolerate it. Nick James, who practices out of the UK, showed in this really nice article that the addition of chemotherapy to bladder, to bladder preservation clearly improves overall survival and clearly prevents um, uh, local regional spread and, and, and uh, recurrence of invasive cancer. So radiotherapy alone is, is less effective and you need to combine this with chemotherapy. This is data that shows that that from pooled analysis, um, from RTOG trials, looking at bladder preservation. And, I, and I, pu I put this in here because you can see patients that had um, a nice maximal TUR, received bladder um, uh, uh, chemo radiation therapy, have really nice long-term survival. And we know that the disease-specific survival is comparable um, to that of patients that underwent cystectomy with T2 disease. We know that chemoradiotherapy is more effective in patients with stage two disease versus stage three or four. Long-term outcomes, this is where it gets a little bit harder for patients to try to decide what they're gonna do. We know that unfortunately there are patients that, that do fail locally where they develop recurrent cancers, upwards of 50% of patients will recur with non-muscle invasive disease. We unfortunately know that about anywhere between 20 to 30% of patients will need um, their bladder removed or undergo a cystectomy. So this is, this is something that has to be discussed with patients uh, prior to, to um, considering. Now, what we also learned, once again, through SWOG, this is Bart Grossman's trial, which showed that if a patient underwent systemic neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is cisplatinum-based, if you receive chemo prior to bladder removal, a randomized controlled trial showed the following, that you had a much higher, or excuse me, you, had, you were able to prevent recurrence and cancer spread, and you were able to have an improvement in overall survival in patients. So this has become standard of care prior to bladder removal. Now, in my practice, everyone I refer for chemotherapy that is eligible. Not all patients are eligible. And, and, and what I mean by that is that they're not able to tolerate chemotherapy, so we have to do um, bladder removal um, in those that are not candidates for TMT. Also, we know that in the future, there are multiple studies that are now looking at things like immunotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting. This is the problem with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We know that if you receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy, this is actually a Kaplan-Meier curve that looks at percent cancer-specific survival. If you get chemo prior to bladder removal and you have no evidence of cancer that is spread to lymph nodes or, or invasive cancer, you actually have a wonderful um, disease-specific survival, upwards of 90%. If you are a non-responder where the chemo, where you still have significant disease in your bladder, your, your overall uh, ability to survive is much less. 
So in the field, what a lot of people have tried to figure out is, is there a molecular marker, biomarker? Is there a genomic test? Is there a mutation status that would predict response to chemo and be able to help guide our treatment options? This is a proposal of how we would do that. If a patient had a subtype directed therapy, if they had a luminal cancer, they would get potentially um, upfront cystectomy. If they had a basal, you would get chemo. If you had an aluminal infiltrated, you would get immunotherapy. Unfortunately, I'm here to say that we are not there yet. And we do not have strong evidence that would say that this is now standard of care. This is something that we all are striving to do but we unfortunately are not there just yet to be able to do that. So this was one of the questions that came up in, the, in there. So in conclusion, I would say that TURBT and pathology evaluation provides diagnosis of stage and grade of bladder cancer, which is used to determine treatment recommendations for both non-muscle invasive and muscle invasive disease. Intravesical, excuse me, BCG and chemotherapy is used for intermediate and high-risk disease <coughs> Excuse me. Options beyond BCG include combination chemo and new FDA approved agents are actually on the way. And remember, if you unfortunately have muscle invasive bladder cancer, we know that the utilization of new adjuvant chemo prior to ra radical cystectomy is now standard of care, as well as bladder preservation approach, which combine chemo radiotherapy with TRBT. That is my last slide. I thank you very much.